right, guys, we are sitting and hoping and waiting, trying to figure, find, figure out what to do, find somebody to play. Uh, we've been, we've been playing this deck for quite some time. I mean, I got quite a few outtakes, I think, maybe could be floating around this weekend. Who knows? Uh, it's, it's, uh, just been kind of weird trying to get matches that are over five minutes, um, to be honest with you. A great, great problem to have. You know, if, if you're going to be playing the game, that's a great problem to have. But, uh, weird. Definitely weird to be disappointed about that, for sure. Uh, looks like we got Kool-Aid Drinker over here. Cultist. Um, I like this. He's on the play, which is a little bit of a problem for me. Uh, is he? Is it, though? No, he is not. <laughs> that was kind of funny. He could be mono black, good stuff, which is kind of a problem for me, because it looks like he just threw everything in the pile in his deck. He could also be Rakdos, which could be bad. No, mono black's really bad for me. I'm going to have to hold this, like, the entire game. That's okay, I guess. We'll just sit here collecting cards. I mean, that's fine with me. I'm a little worried about this matchup, though. He could just be unlucky. No, he's mono black. Yep. Great. Well, he's got a lot of stuff that is too big for me to deal with. That is for certain. Uh, he goes up this turn, regardless. I have to. Get rid of that. People love killing Nighthawks. They eat fire all day. I'll tell you that. Huh. Oh, he's got six cards still. He hasn't even lost card advantage, but he did just miss a land drop. That's really great for me. That's probably, even if he hits every land drop from here on out, that's probably all I needed, to be honest. This thing's going to get matted in the face. Not even really upset by that, though. Because if I can get him to use, I mean, it's not really great because, yeah, told you. <laughs> um, but it's not really great, but I just don't want him to have those murders for Inferno Titan, which is what he should be saving them for, uh, because I am the red guy. It's a pretty safe bet that I'm going to be burning him between now and some point in the future. But stuck on lands, that's not really that bad of an idea. This guy's slurping on that Kool-Aid. He's too busy drinking that Kool-Aid to play any cards. Do I know this guy for one? No, I say go. Because I'm just getting more and more juice, and especially with this in my hand, I'm not too scared of what he has. He's got what's... Yep, knew that was happening. What's his nuts hitting the table? I'm gonna get him another land, but it's also going to die a fiery death. Go ahead and get that out of here. Go to 18. My dude jumps back into my hand. That was pretty great. I couldn't ask for anything more out of that turn. Oh, uh, let's see here. Inferno Titan, but he probably still has the removal, wouldn't you say? Uh, it's going to be better if I'm able to drop Inferno Titan and point him at Liliana's Shade. That'd be pretty funny. Um, but Inferno Titan's pretty strong no matter what. And I take him to 15 regardless, so we are going to go ahead and drop him. Uh, players, definitely not aiming at himself. That is for sure. Jesus. Controller, come on. Cooperate. Players, that guy's face. Take him to 15. Have Inferno Titan out. That seems all right with me. There's not a whole lot he can do that can kill it. Uh, Mutilate doesn't kill it yet. Um, huh. Murder really kills it. I mean, murder kills it. Innocent blood obviously kills it. Um, Rise from Grave, his Nighthawk, I imagine. Life gain's really the only thing he could hope for here. Yeah, but I'll just kill it on the way over. So that's not great. Rise from Grave, target Nighthawk. If it's Shade, we've got... Yeah, Nighthawk is not the right play there, but that's really the only dude he can grab. Uh, that's funny. So let's see, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I do 10 damage to him. Or I do 12 if I just swing and pump. Leave the blood hand open. So I do 9. I could leave this open too, though, and just really shut him down completely. 
so do 8 damage. I think that's going to be the play here. Uh, we're going to bash, kill Nighthawk. So that happens. We're going to slow time down a little bit, enter bullet time, and pump this twice. Keep this open just in case he drops an obliterator or something. I don't know, because I really don't have a problem bashing obliterator in the face right here. I lose four permanents, I don't give a shit. I'll have two mana still, that's eight damage next turn, that's lethal. Uh, so if he drops a blitz or something like that, I can go ahead and just burn it out. If he doesn't, I'm going to go ahead and just do the four damage to his face. Dialbox Tutor's not going to get him there in time, so it looks like we've got yet another win under our belt for this deck. Uh, I mean, man, beating the Mono Black, that's, that's pretty impressive. I, I do enjoy that. Probably should have held on to the murder. I mean, in the rise from grave was was a bad choice. But uh, other than that, there's not really a whole lot he could have done. Let's go ahead and get him in the face here for four. And then actually we get to Stevens him on the way over. This uh, sugar borrowing Stevens right here. There's nothing he can do. Comes in, players him, players him, players. Him. This deck's a freaking tank. I mean, I don't know what to say. It's just amazing. Uh, he didn't really have to see. He had too slow of a hand, probably, to, to be honest. Um, he had too slow of a hand to start with. And I kind of had the nuts. So that's that's hard to dig out from when you're behind the eight ball like that uh, <laughs> with this with this deck going. Uh, like I've been saying, there's, there's a lot of these that are just kind of snippets. There's a lot of just land screws on my opponent's side of the field as well. Uh, so it's it's been kind of a journey recording these, but hopefully you guys are going to enjoy them. Uh, we'll go ahead and let drink the Kool-Aid, wipe his Kool-Aid mustache off, and find somebody else to play Mono Black with. That pile is so great, though. You should probably check out my video uh, for tips on getting that 60 a little bit sexier, a little bit thinner in the waistline. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, there's not really a whole lot. It's kind of hard to commentate for, for Born of Flame 2. Even though there are a ton of decisions to be made during it, like, it, it's a it's a really intricate pile. Um, hopefully these are, these are going well. I don't know if you guys, I don't really know what you guys expected from me to just be burning people's nugs and going crazy and just screaming at the top of my lungs or something. But uh, really, this is a very cerebral pile if you're playing it correctly. Um, and it's, it's especially more of a, of a wait and see pile with the build I have. You definitely don't want to just waste your spells early. Uh, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.